It's out there, and a lot of it is hidden. And nobody wants to talk about it. It seems to be that the majority of the elderly people that are being abused are afraid, are ashamed to say they're a victim. Most of the people doing the victimizing are their own family members. So it makes it really hard for an elderly person in a First Nations community to come out and say, I'm being abused. Anything from financial abuse, spiritual abuse, emotional abuse, physical abuse. It's using a relationship inappropriately that brings harm to that person. I went to the store for you. Now you don't have to. Bank card. Put those away for your grandma. Now, Haley. I invited my friends over tonight to watch the game. Oh, but I've been waiting for a movie that I wanted to watch all week. What should I do? Call everybody and tell them not to come? You should have said something sooner. Never mind, Ryan. I'll just go to my sister's. I'm sure I can watch it there. I don't like to see elders to be abused. There's, they have so much wisdom. They have so much, so much to tell us. The big thing is respect the person who's doing the abusing, not having respect for themselves, not respecting anybody else. Alcohol and drugs play a big role in elder abuse. What a mess. Oh my gosh. Haley, can you help me tidy up? It's my dad's mess. He should clean it up. What about this mess? I'll help later. I have to go. In our community, very small community, in the 30s and 40s, we were taught to respect elders. And then everything changed for me when after my mother died and I went to residential school. And then I noticed the difference. My mom used to tell me not to show their love too much not too much affection to your kids or something and if you show them I love you I love you I love you well that child will become a brat and and spoiled well our elders and historians would say that the intergenerational abuse and trauma that we have stems from colonization and residential school and specifically introducing negative self imagery poor treatment of self uh, by others and then you internalize that and treat others very poorly and that's passed on. Where have you been? We made a trip to the city. Tony's car park wasn't ready so we stayed the night. Haley got some shopping done too. Yep. See? That's nice. You should have told me. Did you use my bank card again? Well, yeah. You know I'll pay you back. Tony said he'd get me a job soon. I'm going to get some groceries. Many, many people are the way they were raised. And if you're raised being abused, certainly you're, you're gonna be abusive too, but it's the only kind of life that you know. If the elder feels responsible for the abuse occurring because they sustain it to their children, to their grandchildren, and they feel somehow, I must deserve this because this is what I've done, so I've got it coming to me. They haven't forgiven themselves, and I think they need to start there first. 
because it is passed on. Hurt people hurt people. The elder was abused in residential school. The parents were abused in residential school. Now the third generation, they are being raised by parents that were never taught parenting or relationship or how to have to show any emotions to your child. Those are the ones that are in, in total demise. I need a ride. I'll go start the car. And a lot of elders, they'll say, oh, no, no, that never happened to me. Oh, I, you know, I'm okay. But when you get to know them a little bit better or what's happening, then you find out, no, it's not okay. You're often confronted with the abuser yourself. If you open your mouth, then he's going to shut it for you. And so one abuse seems to lead to another abuse a lot of times. I feel sorry for my daughter. I told her I was sorry what I did in the past when I got sober 26 years ago. But that child will not stop. He abused me on the phone. Um, I, let it, I let it for so long. As soon as they start to notice that something's different or there is abuse starting to happen, this is the time to deal with that problem. By not dealing with it right away, the problem only escalates. A lot of them, they don't want to see their grandchild or their son be, be put to jail. And they are fearful. All their family might kick them out of their lives. Oh, can I borrow 80 bucks? I have to pay my power bill right away. Didn't you just get your check? Yeah, but Ryan spent a lot of it. He's angry all the time. He spends my money without asking. Haley took my car too. I can't believe it. Did you talk to him about it? I try, but he changes the subject. It must be hard, Flora, but you don't deserve to be treated like that. Do you want to get some help? Yeah, I do. By virtue of them sharing their story, versus you telling them, I think it's abuse. They have to self-identify that. Because for any of us to get help, we have to first of all acknowledge that there's a problem. A couple of months ago, I told her I was tired. I was tired of, I've been trying for the last 26 years with you, and I put up with you all those years. Then, then a couple of months later, she called back and she said, Mom, I know what you went through because my daughter is doing the same thing what I was doing with you. Some action is better than no action at all. Some movement forward will produce something. And what if you don't do it? What's the consequences? You're going to continue to, to live in a life that you're very unhappy in. And a lot of people figure that they can begin to heal themselves, but some people have to realize that they can't do it on their own without the assistance of other people that whom are able to do that. And uh, we often say if the blind lead the blind, they all fall in the ditch. As they go to the helping services in the community and share their story, what's going on for them, that person can help direct them and introduce them to some options that keeps them safe and, and their family members safe. I was wondering if there's anybody there that can help her. No, she's not in any danger. I heard there's a talking circle that helps families. We have so many educated Aboriginal social workers, counselors, psychologists. They have the ability to bring that family together and work with them. A lot of people are afraid to come forward to let the police know. Normally what we'd like to do is interview the initial caller because that is the person who's making the actual complaint and has a concern. From there, we gather the information that we receive from that person and we try to go to the victim. If there is sufficient grounds, 
then we will deal with that person through the courts. If there are elders in the community that would like to have a peacemaking circle, they don't want it really to get involved with the law, they can still make that known to the police. They can still say to the officer, I would love to have a circle to talk about this, and I don't want to press charges. And at the end, we will find a solution. But it takes each and every one of us to find that solution. Flora was on her own. The police that I have uh, sitting in my circles, they actually can confirm that yes, this, this does fall under the criminal code as, a, as abuse and the type of abuse that it is. Because oftentimes people normalize it. They don't realize actually that this is breaking the law. And he doesn't seem to realize what he's doing to me. And I think that we need to bring that family unit together and to start working together. We have to hold our head up, be proud of who we are, and say, no, I will not take that kind of treatment. That's not healthy, that's not good for me. I'm not taking it. And teach that. The people that are doing a lot of the abusing, they're miserable. They don't even love themselves. And how can you love others if you can't begin to love yourself? My choices are affecting the people that I love. And I deeply, deeply apologize for that. And I spent many, many years. Please forgive me and help me to forgive myself. Didn't do nothing about it. But I have to do something about it and forgive myself, you know.